If you've ever wondered what would happen if you take the two most nostalgic controllers ever, the Nintendo controller and the Super Nintendo controller, and combined them together, well, wonder no longer. I present to you the, oh god, what the hell is that in holy abomination? Oh, that's horrifying. Hello, hi there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video buddy. I have been sick as a dog for over a week. <laughs> I lost my voice earlier this week and it was kind of pathetic. Hello, hi, how you doing? I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the <laughs> Luckily, I recorded the audio for three videos at once, which I never do. <laughs> it's almost like uh, I did that and then my body was like, oh, you don't need your voice then. Okay. And it just it took it away from me. But I'm finally able to talk again. If I sound a little different, that's why. Uh, those who know me well, and heck, those who barely know me at all, know that I have a bit of a thing for the old Nintendo vibe. Maybe it's just because I love the Nintendo. Maybe it's because it was my first console. Maybe it's because I still love the Nintendo. Maybe it's because I'm an old man and yearn for the simpler days of sitting on the carpet playing Super Mario Bros and eating Dunkaroos. But I have a serious nerd crush on anything that's beige with gray and red accents. Anytime I can get a thing in this color scheme, I do because I love it. I feel like it captures the spirit of a specific era of... Uh, retro tech. So anything that brings back this vibe is gonna get instant brownie points for me. Which brings us to this, the famous 8-bit dough SN30 Pro controller. I've heard so many good things about this thing. I've heard tons of YouTubers talk about it, I've seen it in a ton of videos, and I'm, I'm sure you probably have too. And I finally pulled the trigger and bought one of my own. And now the question you're probably asking is, what does TechDweeb think of the 8-bit dough SN30 Pro? Well, I'll tell you, that's kind of what I do, if you haven't noticed. The SN30 Pro is the world's first fully featured retro controller. It comes in boring gray and black, or this nostalgic retro color scheme. And also now they have transparent purple and green flavors. It boasts a full button set with clickable joysticks, rumble vibration, motion controls, wireless Bluetooth, rechargeable battery, home and screenshot buttons, and a USB-C connector, and a quote-unquote perfect D-pad. Well, I'll be the judge of that, thank you very much. But yeah, it's, it's perfect. 8-Bit though is known for the quality of not only their product build, but also the handling of the controls and inputs. So obviously we'll take a look at that in a bit. It's the classic Super Nintendo controller shape, which seems to be coming back. I've seen quite a few devices lately with this form factor. Controllers like this, obviously, but there's the uh, RG353PS, for instance, which I loved and is also in that classic Nintendo color scheme. Actually, there's a lot of similarities to how the SN30 Pro and the 353PS feel in the hands. And of course, there's the Datafrog SF2000, the famously super cheap retro handheld that is actually pretty good for the price. And it looks like a Super Nintendo controller too. There's something special about this shape. It feels so dang good in the hands. Nintendo was really onto something with a Super Nintendo controller, and it's a shame that more devices and controllers don't just use this exact shape because it's comfortable as heck. And even the nice big joysticks add to the hand feel. It's just so snug and cozy when you have your mitts on this thing. And speaking of the joysticks, let's talk about the controls. Uh, the joysticks are full-size joysticks. They're not the tiny Switch-style sticks that we get on so many of these things. It's actually uh, a little bit unexpected because the controller is a bit on the small and thin side comparing to like uh, most controllers. And then when you get your stubs on these sticks, it's like, oh, these are full legit sticks. Uh, they have a huge range of motion, very precise and accurate, 
zero cardinal direction snapping, and all that together means that you get a lot of control. For me, the ultimate test of a controller's sticks are using them to control my mouse cursor in Steam desktop mode, and I had no issues pointing that cursor to the exact pixel on the screen that I wanted. The face buttons, d-pad, and bumpers, and, and triggers all feel the same. They're membrane but with a, a tactile click that feels satisfying but not distracting. I read some comments where people were complaining about the clickiness of the buttons, but I love them for what it's worth. The D-pad really is freaking perfect. It is a perfect size. The dip in the middle to rest your thumb and the texture on the arms just feels great to use. And the responsiveness is perfect too. You won't be getting any false diagonals or have any difficulty pulling off your special moves. The bumpers and triggers are especially comfortable, not only because they're easy to use, but also because L2 and R2 have a bit of a dip in them that makes a, a droopy little finger hammock to rest those fingies. One pretty major downside is that these are not analog triggers, so they'll be great for the vast majority of games, but for things like racing games where you need a fine analog trigger control, you're not going to get that here. The start and select button feel different than the face buttons. These are made of rubber and they are super mushy, similar to the old, uh, old, old Super Nintendo started select. They feel good though, I'm not complaining. And then we get these other two buttons, a, a star button and a home button. These dedicated function buttons do different things depending on what you have it connected to. So it'll be the, the menu button or the guide button or the home button. And we get a sync button. So you can hold that to enter pairing mode when you want to switch devices. Uh, the controller does remember the last device it was connected to, by the way. So you won't have to reconnect this manually unless you switch back and forth between devices. And what sort of devices can you connect to? Well, as far as the compatibility goes, you'll get everything you could want, really. This thing has dedicated modes for Switch. We get X input for Windows, SteamOS, and Raspberry Pi. We get D input for Android and Mac mode for Apple crap. iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Mac OS, all that crap. When you're on Bluetooth, the latency is all but non-existent. I tried my hardest to detect any latency at all, and I couldn't. It felt 100% responsive. And I'm confident that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a Bluetooth connection and a wired connection. Of course, you could plug it in via USB if you don't want to deal with Bluetooth, or to keep using it while you're charging it. I was speaking of charging, the battery on this thing is freaking fantastic. They say you'll get 18 hours of playtime on a single charge and they're not lying. I, I only use this for maybe an hour a day and it really does last weeks between charges. It actually surprises me when it needs to be charged because it happens so infrequently. We've already talked about the performance of the controls, the, the accuracy of the sticks and the responsiveness of the buttons. It all works great, but I want to talk about how it performs in games. Is this thing actually comfortable to use? Which games is it good for and which games isn't it good for? I think the most obvious use case is going to be retro games. I mean, it's a Super Nintendo shaped controller. Come on now. <laughs> for retro games, you're going to have a, an experience that not only feels authentic, but it looks the part too. For NES or Super NES or Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, Sega, you're, you're going to feel right at home on the SN30 Pro. And also PlayStation and Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, PSP. It's honestly so generally comfortable for these kind of games and the, the, the controls are so convenient and they work so good that it lends itself well to almost any retro system. The only exception is when you get into the higher end systems like GameCube, and PS2 or beyond up to Xbox 360 or PS3 or whatever because of those non-analog triggers. However, the main games that you'll want analog triggers for are racing games and it's not that you can't play racing games. I'm not a racing game pro, but I can play these games with this thing and ha have a great time. It's just that the racing game purists won't enjoy not having precise throttle and brake control. Uh, another category of games that this thing freaking excels at is low spec PC games. You know, like, like modern indie games and platformers and stuff. And yeah, the SN30 Pro feels 100% perfect. Games like 
the Stardew Valley or Dead Cells are, are great. Lots of these indie games feel like modern retro games, so it makes sense that they play well on a retro style controller. And then there's the big games. Giant, big, fat, booty, AAA games. How are they going to work? Well, they do work. I can play Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The controls perform well and I can do all my stuff. I can, I can run around, I can aim, even precision aiming is no issue. But I'm used to playing this game on a big proper Xbox controller. So it does feel a bit awkward on the SN30 Pro. I gave myself a, a good long while to get used to it. I played a bunch of PC games, trying to see if I could retrain my muscle memory to use this controller, and it did sort of work. Most games felt awkward at first, but I did eventually come around and, and start feeling at home. But I don't think that the ergonomics of this controller lends itself to having two thumbs on two sticks during the entire play session. It's not the best layout for these sorts of games. But you can get used to it, and while it's not ideal, it is at least comfortable enough to use like this. And maybe if you're not as used to an Xbox controller as I am, you'll feel fine once you get used to this. But even after many days of testing the controller across a ton of different games and devices, when I went back to an Xbox controller, it immediately felt better. No question, the good old Xbox controller layout is better for these types of games. I am more accurate, and it's just generally a more comfortable experience. So the SN30 Pro can do the job on these sorts of games, but I, I don't think it's going to replace your traditional game controller if you play AAA third-person action games or first-person shooters, or racing games, I guess. So should you buy an SN30 Pro? Well, I don't know. It's $40, which is pretty expensive for a controller of this size, especially when you consider the limitations. The controls are great, but it doesn't do anything new. The build quality is good, but to be honest, I would have expected it to feel a bit better considering the price. Just in terms of the feel of the plastic and the small details around the seams and whatnot, for AAA games, it's, it's not better than the good old Xbox controller. It's a, a little bit less comfortable for those games and you don't get the analog triggers, but for the games that it's good for, retro games, platformers, low spec and indie games, it's a no brainer. This is the best controller for those kind of games that I can think of. This, that's why I bought it. I guess I feel like it makes sense to have two controllers in your life. An Xbox or PlayStation style controller for AAA games and a retro style controller for the simpler games. I wouldn't want to play retro games on any other controller than this, which is a high compliment considering how many retro games I play. This has uh, taken permanent residence on my desk. It lives there right beside my other controller and I love it to bits. And if you want one of these bad boys, I'll include a link in the description below. And you can buy it on Amazon, so you could buy it to try it and at worst return it if you don't like it. But heads up, you will like it and you'll, you will want to keep it. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this useful. Uh, sorry about my uh, extra nasally, extra scratchy voice today. Hope it wasn't uh, too bad to listen to. I'd like to give an extra big special thank you to my generous supporters on Patreon who help make what I do better. If you'd like to become a patron and help support the th things that I do, there's a link in the description below. And that's it for me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.